Welcome to the Daily Update. We'll go over the action in the market for Tuesday, October 10th, and then we'll see how things look for Wednesday, October 11th. I'm recording on a different computer today, so if you notice anything different in the sound and even what you see and you want to comment on that, please let me know. If I don't hear anything back, I'll just assume that everything is A-OK -okay with this. We had another up day, but there's a few little warning signs under the surface. Now, they could be dealt with with another solid up day, but just some things that I want to point out in the charts that might suggest, eh, maybe we're starting to fizzle out just a little bit. Now, in the short term, we are positive, but even over the last couple of days, we've already shot up to an extreme positive reading on a number of our charts, and I'll go through those. Intermediate term, we are showing improvement, so that's kind of a good thing. Long term, we still continue to be positive. So just to go back and talk about what happened, right at the open, we had a higher open with prices climbing to R1 pretty much right off the bat at 43.57. We actually then were able to climb above R2 at 43.78. This is where things started to turn a little bit more negative. Prices fell back below R2, which is normal. And then we drifted sideways. We didn't see any late day buying coming in. That's when the smart money likes to do their thing. We didn't see that in Tuesday's session. And we were able to close at R1. So we closed pretty well off of the high. We were still up though, 0.52%, but another little fizzle warning we are below average with volume. On a solid up day, we would like to see a lot more volume come into the picture. The technicals were positive in the short term, but becoming extended to the upside. Improving in the intermediate term, we're still positive in the long term. Inflation and interest rates are what is really driving things. We also have a new geopolitical event with the war between Israel and Hamas. And we're wondering, is that going to escalate? Is the U.S. going to get involved in any way? Are they able to show that Iran was involved? Will the U.S. do anything because of that? Will Israel do anything because of that? Is that going to affect the other war going on between Russia and Ukraine? A lot of open-ended, unanswered questions right now. Some comments that we can make. Bonds are being seen right now during this geopolitical phase as a flight to safety. It's like, okay, we have some money. We need to put it somewhere. Uh, let's send it to the U.S. and buy some bonds. They've been going down lately. They're oversold, so let's stick it in there, and maybe we can make some money at the same time. And when you see this coming into the U.S. bond market, that's buying, and that pushes prices up, which pushes interest rates down. Oil also declined. It was in the 86 range after Monday. It's at 85, 89 after Tuesday. Small caps did pretty well, but we're generating a death cross now with our small cap index. The micro caps, they were up in Tuesday's session, but we're still pretty new that 52-week low, pretty near the new 52-week low. And our list already, look at this, short-term overbought. This is really strange that we can only have two or three updates and all of a sudden we're getting extreme positive readings. We have the CMB Composite, the Stoke RSI, the Williams Percent R, the CCI 14, the Stochastics, and the Force Index. And I'll show you all these charts. Intermediate term, we have one of our charts out of the three that we look at with our PMO studies. That's also extreme positive. And we're still wondering, is a new scenario going to develop? Now, we're going to get the FOMC meeting minutes on Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Is that going to shift into a new scenario or just be a continuation of what we've already been dealing with where the economy is stronger than expected, the Fed will likely keep rates higher for longer, and if we continue to get a lot of strong economic reports, they may even have to raise interest rates. We're watching China's economy as well. Now we have a new addition here, the Israel-Hamas war, and we're keeping an eye on oil prices. The dollar was up. It spent a lot of the day coming down, which helped give some support to stocks. But by the time it closed, it was up and interest rates were down. We have the 30 to the 5, the 10 to the 5. Those are back to being normal. We're the 10 to the 2 and the 10 to the 3 month, which are the more important yield curves that folks tend to watch. Those still are inverted. Sentiment is showing some improvement. We got down below 25 a few days ago. We're inching our way back up. We were at 30 after Monday. Now we're at 32 after Tuesday, but it's still negative. 
our trend. This is another area where we're seeing a change, both in the short and intermediate term. We're seeing the green line go back above the red line on both the short and intermediate term chart. And I know when I'm going through some of these charts that I get the colors mixed up and I say it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm trying to do all of this as take one. And sometimes I'll look at a red and blue line and I'll say, look at that yellow line right there. I, I get that confused quite a bit because I'm trying to focus on what I'm saying. I don't always focus on the actual facts of what you're seeing in the video. The economic reports that came out, we had the NFIB Small Business Optimism Survey. Not a big report, but some people pay attention to this. It came in down from the last time of 91.3. This time it came in at 90.8. Wholesale inventories, again, not a real influential report, down 0.1%. As expected, last time it came in down 0.3%. Here's a chart of the Optimism Index showing how we were seeing some real improvement throughout the summer, now we're starting to see this begin to go back down. Looking at the inventories, where they were a lot more negative and we're seeing some improvement, even though they continue to be negative. We're also keeping an eye on the 10-year yield, where it closed right around the 4.66% level. That's above the 4.02% level. When we get above that level, that's when it starts to have an impact on stocks and their earnings, because now they have to pay money out in interest instead of paying money to shareholders or boosting up their stock price. Here's the intraday chart where we didn't have much of a gap, but we did have a higher open. And we quickly went up to R1, we made it up to R2, and then we started to fizzle out here and everything was holding up okay. And then we saw some kind of a sell program or something come into the market, which really took us back down. But later in the day, this is when you would expect the, the smart money to come in and really start to do some buying. They didn't. And so we just pretty much drifted a little bit lower and we ended up closing down at R1. So we were well off the high. Looking at large cap growth versus value, they were both positive on the day. Even though they're on different scales, we're still seeing growth outperforming value. This is a little bit of a concern and another fizzle warning here. We're going back to about the 22nd of September. We were seeing a nice little climb when we compare growth versus value with the S&P. Well, we actually closed down with this ratio in Tuesday's session. And maybe the smart money says, okay, we've run this high enough. We like some of the profits that we have and we're gonna take those now. Or maybe they just took the day off. Or maybe we're starting to see something that could give us some warning signs. Looking at growth versus value for the S&P on a closing basis, we did tick down a little bit. We're still doing okay. We broke out above these previous levels. We're still in an uptrend, but to see this come down, just something that we want to take notice of. Here's the change that we're seeing right now with our trend. This is the intermediate term, intermediate term trend as measured by the ADX. It's below its moving average. So that's a weakening trend, but it's still above 20. So that shows that we are in a trend. We're starting to see the green line go above the red line now. So we're switching more to positive. We're seeing pretty much that same thing with the short term a weakening trend below the moving average. The green line going above the red line, the ADX is above 20. It's a trend, but it's a weakening trend. We're also coming up closer to the middle part of October, where sometimes this is about the time when we would see the VIX top out. If we're going to stick to the average from 1990 up to 2022, we don't know. It might play out a little different this time. This is just something that we use as a guide. Looking at the ulcer index, we are dropping off with this fear gauge. We're starting to drop a little bit with the VIX based on the line chart, and we closed in about the middle of the bar with the bar chart. We're seeing volatility decrease with the VIX of the VIX, where we're dropping below the moving average with the bar chart, also with the line chart. This is longer term negative. When we look at the VIX to VVIX ratio, it's continuing to go up, and we want that to go down for it to be positive. The VIX to move ratio, after really spiking up, it's really starting to trail off and dropping below the red line, the moving average. That's just showing the volatility is starting to lessen. And this is positive for right now with the equity put call ratio based on five periods. We're dropping down and we are declining. So that's positive. And we're coming out of an extreme reading. That's positive as well. The one thing to be a little concerned about is we've been at this level before. When this signal is the strongest is when we just really spike up and we see some kind of capitulation going on in the market. We really didn't see that all that much. We never even made it down to the 200-day simple moving average. 
But for right now, this is positive. We'll see if this can continue. Here's a longer term look at that same chart where we're starting to drop down below this red line, which is the extreme positive reading. Looking at the longer term equity put call ratio, we're continuing to go up. That's very long term. That's longer term negative. We're starting to decrease a little bit with this other fear gauge. We're seeing some improvement with the advanced decline one. We crossed back above the moving average based on price. We're ticking back up, but we're still below the moving average based on volume. We're seeing a little bit of an expansion of new highs and a contraction of new lows. So that's helping our five period and our 10 period to turn back up. In the short term, we've crossed above the midpoint now with the blue line. That's the shorter term advanced decline ratio. The longer term, it's showing improvement, but it's still below zero. Accumulation distribution. We're seeing this leveling off just a little bit. We're above the moving average and we have been seeing some improvement. But since we didn't see any late day buying in Tuesday's session, we are not seeing this continue to go up. And that's kind of fizzle out warning number five or whatever I'm on now. We are seeing a bit of an improvement here with the check and money flow. This is another smart money measurement where we have been seeing some consistent improvement, but we're still below zero. And we're above the long-term trend line here. And we were able to close above this pivot point. So that's looking more positive on a chart basis. We're still below the 50 period moving average. But if you look at the bottom, we've now had two days of below average volume. And that's also showing here where this indicator itself, it's below, it's above this line. So that means that we're above average, but we have been trailing off recently. And looking at some of our short-term indicators, the Stoke RSI, this is the second day now that it's been extreme positive. The Williams Percent R is starting to get extreme positive. The CCI 14 extreme positive. And the Force Index, which turned positive after money, it came right up to the Keltner band. And it's hitting that area. So a lot of times when we see this, we think maybe we've moved a little too far too fast. Looking at our stochastics, we're starting to already get extreme positive in the short, short term. We're turning positive in the intermediate term and we're showing some improvement and no longer extreme negative in the long, short term. The CMB composite, we're above this black line and I draw this line on here. So there's nothing magic about it. I just use it as a point of reference. But a lot of times when we get to a pretty high reading like this, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see a reversal, but we could see things start to slow down. Looking at our double and triple exponential moving average based on 20 periods, we're above both lines here and starting to go up. And what's more positive is both of these lines are starting to turn back up. So that's more positive in the short term. When we look at our regular 20 period simple and exponential moving average, we close both above we closed above both the simple and exponential moving averages. That's slightly more positive. The longer we can stay above this, the more positive it will be. And we'll see these lines start to turn and go up. The Swindon Trading Oscillator, turning more positive. We're above zero and advancing based on price and volume. The Go No Go system is still negative since it's purple, but it's turning a lighter shade of purple. So that's more of a neutral to positive reading. The TTM squeeze, after giving us kind of an extreme negative reading, is showing some improvement. When we were coming down, these lines were dark red. As we're starting to show some improvement, they're turning to a lighter shade of red. The um, balance of power is right on the dashed line right now. So it is showing some improvement, but it's neither positive nor negative. And the highest high, lowest low values, we closed above the midpoint on this chart. That's a slight improvement. The vortex is still negative but we are declining with the red line and advancing with the green line. The bullish percent index, after giving us a reading below 30, we bounced up out of that. Now we bounced and come back down. It's teased us before in the past, so we want to be aware of that. But for right now, based on what we see, this is turning more positive. The S&P McClellan oscillators above zero in advancing and not extreme. And so when we look at the summation index based on price, we're turning back up as well as volume. And volume actually led this chart by a few days. Looking at the NYSE McClellan oscillator, above zero and advancing, that's turning more positive. So when we look at the NYSE summation index based on price, we're just barely turning back up as well as turning up based on volume. The Elder Impulse system for the S&P remains positive with a green bar. The Arun indicator ticked up just a little bit. It's still negative because we're below this zero point, 
This measures the difference between the red line, which are sellers and buyers, which is the green line. And then when it's really out of line like this, that's when we get the negative reading. We've also been watching to see, is this an extreme negative reading and starting to bounce up from that. On balance volume, looking a little bit more positive, we closed above the red line. If we can stay above that, that would turn the red line back up higher. The Copic curve is now generating a buy signal. The RSI based on 14 periods is just barely above the midpoint. We've crossed above 50 with the RSI based on nine periods. So this is showing improvement, especially in the short term. On a momentum basis, we're seeing a lot of improvement here. The PMO hasn't quite crossed above its moving average, but sometimes based on price and volume, these can lead us. And we've already crossed above the moving averages based on those. With the PMOs that are rising, we're just barely into the extreme positive reading. We're looking more positive with the buy signals. And after getting kind of extreme negative, we're starting to turn back up with the PMOs that are above zero. We're turning up just a little bit with the NYSE bullish percent index, but we're still below 50. So that's negative, but showing improvement. Where we're looking more positive with the NASDAQ 100 bullish percent index, we've crossed above the 50 level and are turning more positive. The slope oscillator, after giving us a pretty extreme negative reading, turning back up above its moving average, that's turning positive. The MACD is also crossing above its moving average after giving us a pretty negative reading. That is also positive. So in the short and intermediate term, we're turning back positive. We're showing improvement in the long term, but we haven't crossed above the moving averages yet. Looking at our 50 period double and triple exponential moving averages, we came right up to the blue line here, which may be acting as some kind of overhead resistance for right now. If we can get above this and see these lines turn back up, that would be intermediate term positive. And looking at our regular 50 period moving average study, we came right up to the underside of the exponential moving average. Looking at our 100 period moving average, we're right in between the exponential and the simple moving average. And noticing here the pivot point, we close right on that pivot point. So that's support that could be holding for now. Looking at our moving average tree, we're starting to dance around with the shorter term moving averages. If we can break above this, that would turn these lines back up. If we start to go up, some of these may act as overhead resistance and start to push us down. With our standard deviations chart, we're turning slightly more positive. We closed above the midpoint after getting an extreme negative reading. So this is showing improvement. The Jake and oscillator is above zero and advancing. That's positive. The money flow is still negative, but showing improvement, even though it's still below 50. The ultimate oscillator is above 50 and showing some improvement and actually turning positive. The parabolic SAR has the dots underneath, which are positive. We're above the 100% retracement level with the S&P short-term FIB chart. And we're in the middle of this little mini rainbow when we look at the 20 period simple moving average of the open high, low, and the close. We wanna get above this and have the lines turn back up for it to be more positive. If we're in a downtrend and we come back up, one of these lines will typically act as overhead resistance. Looking at our long-term trend study, we're getting a little bit further away from the long-term trend that is showing some improvement going back to the October 2022 low. The special K, this is still a concern. We're starting to drop below the red line. We don't see a lot of signals on this chart. So if it continues to fall, that would be negative on the daily charts. We remain negative on the weekly charts. Looking at the 50 period moving average study for the S&P after giving us an extreme negative reading, we're starting to bounce up out of that. And looking at the 19-day exponential moving average of the advanced decline ratio, after getting extreme based on price and volume, we're starting to come back and go above the zero line. That's showing some improvement. With the micro caps, we're still below 100, but we did have a pretty good update on Tuesday. The hike in Ashi is looking more positive. The Kegi is looking positive with the black bar pointing up. The Renko, though, is still looking negative. The three-line break is showing some improvement. The equal weight index actually had a pretty good day, but it's still underperforming the S&P 500 weighted index. And we can see that where the ratio came down just slightly. When this is really going up, that means the big mega caps are outperforming. We're coming almost back up to the 200-day moving average with the Dow, but we were not able to close above that. We just about came up to this pivot point and then closed down below that. The diamonds, though, remained at positive for the Elder's Impulse system. The NASDAQ came right up to this previous high, 
And that seemed to act as overhead resistance, and we ended up closing down below it. On the positive side, we are above the 50-day moving average. So we want to see, is this going to start to turn things back down, or are we going to be able to break through to the upside with this? The elder impulse system for the QQQ still remains positive, and we're looking more positive on a momentum basis with the NASDAQ 100. We've crossed above the moving average. Now, we're below zero, but we're showing some improvement here. The histogram shows us being positive. If we see more follow-through upward price action, this will eventually go above the zero line. Looking at the NASDAQ, where we came right up to the 50-day moving average, we're above this pivot point, but this 50-day moving average could be acting as overhead resistance. The small caps, we are now generating a death cross here. Even though they had a couple of good days, it wasn't enough to really turn things back around. And looking at the Russell 2000 ETF, we're not quite there at a death cross yet. We're showing some, showing some improvement with the RSI. It's coming back up to 50. We're starting to cross above the moving average with the MACD. And after coming down to the support areas in here, so far that support area has held. The small caps for the Elder Impulse system have switched to positive after being neutral. The small caps, when we look at small cap growth versus value, they're still hanging in there pretty well, not really breaking out at this point, but continue to be in an uptrend. The mid caps also below their 200-day moving average and getting close to a death cross, even though they've had a good couple of days. The mid caps for the Elder Impulse system have now switched from neutral to positive. And looking at mid-cap growth versus mid-cap value, this has kind of been one of the stronger areas where we saw a little bit of a tick down on Tuesday's session, but longer term, this has been holding up fairly well. Dow theory saw a bit of a bounce with the Dow and the transports and a little bit of a bounce with the utilities. The FANG, ind Fang index continues to be above its 50-day moving average, and we're in a longer-term uptrend. And we're above this arithmetic scale now, going back to 2009. That's a little bit more positive. And looking at the staples s and 500 ratio, where this has really been declining, if you look at other times when we spiked up and then started to come down, that often really gave good support to the S&P. We're wondering if that's going to happen this time. Looking at growth versus value, where the Qs are outperforming the S&P, we are seeing a little bit of weakness with discretionary to the S&P. That's fizzle sign number eight or something. But we're still hanging in there, even though we declined a little bit with large cap growth versus large cap value. So when we look at the growth to value ratios, we're still looking positive with the large caps, mid caps, and small caps. This is also another warning sign that we've been talking about. We're still below the zero line with our 50-day exponential moving average study of the new highs minus the new lows. But on the positive side, you can see the black line crossed back above zero. If it can stay above that, that'll eventually turn the red line back up and turn this indicator more positive. Looking at the 10-day average of the S&P 500 highs minus the lows, after getting us into an extreme negative reading, we are continuing to show some improvement. The dollar continues to be in an uptrend and was up slightly in Tuesday's session. We're also coming up to the end of this cycle. In fact, today, this trading session will be the last day of the cycle. And now we will start a new cycle, wondering if that's going to mean anything. We don't really know if that's a good thing or a bad thing at this point. Sometimes that can mean something. And then bonds, which this is the yield for bonds, just been going to the moon and back. Well, now they're coming more in the end back type of movement or they really are shooting down now based on the yield. And when bond yields go down, that mean price, means that prices go up. So we're seeing some improvement here. The RSI is still below 50, but we're seeing a little bit of a momentum shift with the MACDs trying to cross above its moving average. <clears throat> when we look at the 30 to the five year, we're still positive there. The 10 to the five year is also positive. And we look at the 10 year yield in the US and subtract the German 10 year yield, that's still going up. The dollar has been going up and the correlation is still relatively strong between the two. And I finally got this email updated. This is from Tom Bally. He operates a site called earning, earningsbeats.com and he's also a contributor to stockcharts.com where we're looking at the month of October where we have staples, which are not hot. And you could like, okay, tell us something we don't already know where you have the financials, which tend to do a lot better. Now, they've been under a lot of pressure lately. Now, looking at his research, coming into the beginning of the month, we tend to see some upward thrust there. 
Now we're coming out of this seventh through ninth, which is where we've been seeing some, actually we've been seeing a bit of a bounce here. We're coming into the middle part of the month where we tend to see some positive reaction based on his research. And then when we get towards the latter part of the month, we see a decrease. We're coming into the end of the month, we tend to see things jumping up positive where we have asset managers and what in the world is that? I can't read that at the bottom. Here's a couple of different industry groups that tend to be strong, but for some reason it's too blurry for me. So what's our outlook for Wednesday? We still have the UAW strike, which is like, oh yeah, there's an auto strike going on right now because we have other major geopolitical events. They're still trying to decide, are we gonna get a new speaker of the house? Who's it gonna be? And when is it gonna happen? The Israel-Hamas war, that's dominating all the news right now. Unfortunately, that's how the news works. Everybody's focused on it. Everybody's posting things on social media about their support for Israel. And then Israel's going to retaliate. And believe me, they have the ability to do it big time. And they're probably going to get to the point where, oh, no, Israel, you should stop right now. And the media, anyway, is likely to turn against Israel. But Israel's got to do what it's got to do to protect itself. Our technicals are improving and we're turning positive, especially in the short term. Are we starting to see some fizzle signs here? And I know that's a technical term, but it, it's like we're seeing some exhaustion at this point. Now, that could change with some upward movement, but we're, we need to see some of that. We will be getting the weekly MBA mortgage applications index. The PPI, that's the first of the big inflation readings that we will be getting. And we'll get the FOMC meeting minutes at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And then the, all the list of geopolitical events. Right now, it's Israel and Hamas. That's really what's dominating. Here's the updated calendar showing what's coming out on Wednesday. We're going to get the biggie of the big inflation report. The CPI will be coming out on Thursday. We'll be getting consumer sentiment on Friday. The Stock Traders Almanac statistics for October 11th were neutral to positive across the board with all the indexes. And we're wondering, is this green area that's going up, is that the little bouncy time that we're seeing right now? Are we seeing this little bouncy time right now as far as Carson is seeing? Because remember, we see some weakness after this quite often during a pre-election year. Also with the NASDAQ, little bouncy time, little crash time, not crash, decline. That's one thing about the PERMA bears. Anytime we have a down day, we were down 10 points today. Well, it was a crash. You know, they just, they love to speculate and accentuate the negative. We're looking at the S&P. Are we in that little bouncy time now before we potentially could see some weakness later in the month? And then looking at this, we are up 10 out of 18 times in the month of September. We're down, excuse me, October. <laughs> You'd think I'd want September to be over with. Well, we're down eight out of 18 times. So we have a slight edge on being positive. And then keeping an eye on Bitcoin, which really isn't doing all that much right now, the more I've been seeing some posts on Twitter and you got these guys that are all convinced they're just loading up on Bitcoin. It's not going anywhere yet, but we're still kind of in that window when that could happen. And here's the chart where we're just mainly chopping sideways. We were actually down in Tuesday's session after generating a recent death cross. So our scenarios, we could lean more towards the down one because we still have a lot of down technicals. But they are showing some improvement. And in the short term, we're turning positive. Are we going to see some kind of a fizzle here? You could almost go with the up scenario now, but we're going to need to see some follow through here. And it might be kind of risky because we're dealing with being overbought in the short term. But we're not going with the sideways trend, even though we switch from negative to positive and we're below the moving averages, we're still above 20. So that's considered to be a trending environment. The warning signs, and I'm trying to split these up into different slides. We tend to be better in October than we were in September. The long-term equity put-call ratio is going up. With the risk-on posture, which I didn't show because it was virtually unchanged, it's showing some weakness. The 50-period new high, new low exponential moving average study is negative. The Russell's below its 200-day simple moving average. Now, the Russell has not given us a death cross yet. But we are seeing a head and shoulders top there that could be negative, where the small cap index has generated a recent death cross. The vortex indicator is negative, but you can see the red line going down and the green line going up. And then the longer term signs, and I'm not going to show these in every video. This is mainly what I cover in the weekly video. 
we're still below those longer term trend lines. When you look at weekly charts of the S&P and the NASDAQ 100, the cumulative new highs, new lows for the NASDAQ are showing weakness. We're still above the yield where we were with the three month going back to 2007. And then earnings season, I'm going to put that on this slide as well. Then the positive signs, the daily special K chart. It's positive, but we're starting to cross over negative, and the weekly chart is negative. The equity put call ratio is going down. That's the five period study that we do. Our oscillators are turning positive, and our NASDAQ 100 oscillator that we follow is also turning positive, but we're still not crossing over yet in the long term with our oscillators. The parabolic SAR is positive. The BPI has generated a buy signal after it crossed back above 30. The Copic curve has generated a buy signal. The Staples to S&P 500 ratio is declining, which is positive for the S&P. The S&P is outperforming utilities, which is also positive for the S&P. The Russell and the small caps did generate recent golden crosses, but as long as they stay below their respective 200-day moving averages, we might see death crosses. Small and mid-cap growth, which I tried to show in this video, are, they still remain positive. The financial sector, which I didn't show, it's below its 200-day moving average, even though it has a recent golden cross. Our positive signs, seasonality and setups, those are in the background. I go through those in the weekly chart. And we're still above the downtrend channel upper line. I go through that in the deep dive video. So our conclusion, we're turning positive in the short term or for longer term. Is this just a little blip up before we get set to going lower? You can make a case for that. But there's some positive things that we can look at, but we need to see some strength under the surface as follow through to show a little bit more conviction. In the short term, we're positive, but we're becoming overbought. Intermediate term, we are showing some improvement. In the long term, we still remain positive. Thank you. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you have a great day, and I will talk to you in the next video.